Nations has warned that Gaza is being strangled by Israel's week-long siege and aerial bombardments. The death toll in the Gaza Strip has climbed to 2,700, while Israeli authorities believe that 199 people are being held hostage by Hamas. The situation is dire, to say the least, as Israel's defense forces continue to urge people to evacuate northern Gaza. The Egyptian foreign minister has said that Israel is blocking Egypt's Rafah border crossing with Gaza, where thousands have amassed in order to flee. In the latest, Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shataya has also warned against military action and an aim to displace the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. Listen to what he had to say. <laughs> من الأمر العسكري الرامي لتهجير أهلنا في قطاع غزة وصناعة نكبة جديدة ونؤكد أن شعبنا لن يترك أرضه ولن يهاجر منها مهما غلت التضحيات وأنه قادر على مواجهتها وإفشالها كما أفشل العديد من المشاريع التصفوية والتوطين على طول حكب النضال الماضية Meanwhile, Iran's foreign ministry has said that Hamas may be ready to release hostages if Israel stops air bombing in Gaza. While on the ground, the fate of aid deliveries and evacuation of over a million people living in Gaza hangs in balance. UN aid chief is heading to West Asia to negotiate humanitarian aid being allowed inside Gaza. And ahead of his visit, the UN said that they were in deep negotiations with both sides. Egypt has blamed Israel for not making its position clear on opening the Rafah crossing from Gaza for entry or exiting of people from the conflicted areas. Amid Israel's vow to end Hamas, there is a risk of long-drawn regional conflict. Diplomatic efforts to address the crisis are intensifying. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is back in Israel today and is currently meeting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem. He is also expected to meet with Israel's defense minister and opposition leader Yair Lapid. This comes in the backdrop of his several meetings with Arab states over the past several days in what is being called America's shuttle diplomacy. Israeli defense forces have blamed Iran for sidetracking its war efforts in southern Gaza by instructing Hezbollah to attack the Lebanon border. Hezbollah mimesh etmol mispar pigwe yeri al menat lenasot ve lasit et ha-mamatsim ha-mipcaim shelanu ma-darom. Zot ba-anchaya ve gibui irani toch sikun shel medinat Lebanon ve ezrachia. In response, Good Iran afternoon. has denied these accusations by pointing the gun at the United States, saying that America should be held accountable for the Israel-Palestine conflict. America must be accountable for the regime of the Zionist regime. This country is America, which is the only one who is in the defense of the regime of the Zionist regime on the Palestine and the people of Palestine. The government of the Zionist نظامی به آبهای منطقه ای معنا و مفهومی جز حمایت یک جانبه و یک طرفه از متجاوز و از ظالم در مقابل مظلوم U.S. President Joe Biden has expressed his support for Israel but has warned that Israel's reoccupation of Gaza would be a big mistake. The siege, which has been criticized by human rights groups, comes in response of a surprise assault by Hamas on the 7th of October. Now, the UN Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA, has said its aid workers will no longer be able to continue humanitarian operations in the Gaza Strip unless new supplies are allowed in the enclave. The conflict so far has claimed at least 4,000 lives and continues to mount as time progresses. The WHO says 60 percent of casualties in Gaza have been women and children. Okay, we just spoke to Sadan, but earlier Sadan also sent us uh, this report. Our correspondent, Sadan Sabal, you know, he's been covering this conflict from the front lines and with the conflict now escalating by each minute. Uh, he was able to look at one of the bunkers in Israel's Sederet, which borders Gaza. I'm inside a bunker here in Zerot, and this bunker has names of many people who have been kidnapped, people from 16 years old to 85 years old. We'll show you uh, the pictures of these people uh, here in uh, Zerot. Uh, uh, for example, a 16-year-old 
Amit, this 85-year-old Israeli as well, many of them young, old as well, and clearly it states that on October the 7th, nearly 200 innocent civilians were abducted from Israel into Gaza Strip. Their whereabouts remain unknown. More than 3,000 women, men and children ranging from the age of 3 months to 85 year old were wounded, murdered, beaten, raped and brutally separated from loved ones by Hamas. Take a photo of this poster and share it. These kind of posters can be seen um, across this bunker. And these posters are normal across Israel and other parts of Israel as well. In Tel Aviv, there are many pictures which have been showcased, but it shows the sense of grief. And in these communities, these are small communities, uh, there is increased worry over their loved ones, where they are. It's been over one week, and there is a lot of anger on uh, the street, even as um, we know that the Prime Minister met with the family members of uh, uh, many of them uh, who have been abducted. With video journalist Sanjeet Sidhan Sibal for Vion in Zerot, Southern Israel.